Hey, what's up, you guys? It's your girl, Taylor Parks, and I'm here with Friends 24. And this is my new single, System, from my album, Coping Mechanisms. It's about turning up to forget about somebody. I can, uh, I can. I'm gonna party till I get you on my system, yeah. Oh, my dream. Oh, my weed. I'm gonna party till I get you on my system, yeah. She's co-written some of the best breakup songs of all time. If you don't know her face, you almost certainly know the words she helped write for Ariana Grande that got her nominated for a Grammy. She's also written songs for the likes of Janelle Monet, Christina Aguilera, Mariah Carey and John Legend. Taylor Parks, hello from Paris. You're in LA. How are you doing? I am doing great. I'm enjoying a little nice weather. Uh, missing, missing kind of being on you guys' side, though, for the holidays. Taylor, you love collaborating and have written hundreds of songs for the likes of Ariana Grande, Christina Aguilera, and Janelle Monet. When did you start working on your second album? I started working on the solo album, the second one, uh, probably right after finishing up tour with Anderson Peck. Um, right as I was about to join on with Lizzo. So I had all of these life experiences and everything and, and coping mechanisms kind of came at the perfect time for me when I was just working through a lot of motion. And a lot has changed in America during the creation of this record. Um, how do you see the USA uh, coming up to 2021 after a year of pandemic and with a new president and new vice president? I think it gives us a lot of hope. This has been a really, really tough year. We've been going through a lot, uh, to say the least. Um, and, and I think that people need this just fresh change to get back to a little bit of, a little bit of normal, you know? And how much um, do you think coronavirus and the solitude that it's inflicted on us is reflected in your new album? Oh, I think it's reflected so much in my new album because I think the biggest part of what we were able to have as a society is a moment to have that just self-reflection um, and, and understand ourselves just a little bit more. It was interesting to see a lot of ways that people were coping with having to be alone um, or, or having to just kind of be in an uncomfortable situation for most of us. Uh, and, and so you hear that, you know, and I was able to see people, you know, getting in the garden and like, like I was, I was able to see people um, just find other other ways of coping. Um, and in my album in particular, you hear me coping through, at one phase it was partying, at one phase it was gardening. And, and it just, you're seeing that evolution, of, uh, that evolution of me. And it's almost the antithesis of your um, 2019 debut album, We Need to Talk, which explored heartbreak a lot. Are you telling more of a linear storyline in this album? Yes. Coming into this new album, it was more about, okay, how do you how do you progress from heartbreak? You know what I mean? The the last album, We Need to Talk, it was like, okay, I just want to dive into it and see what happens. And and what ended up happening is me finding a very real emotion that a lot of us try to avoid. But for me personally, I really needed that. Um, it was something that I avoided uh, a lot. Then going into so coping mechanisms, it was a nice thing because it was you hearing me try to figure it out. Like, what are the best ways that I can get over, you know, what I felt going through that last album? I listened to the album in a linear way, starting with the first track, Sad. And I love this bit. And I know I shouldn't say How did it come about? You know that moment where everybody, I think, 
is excited when that person that you know hurt you or one of those people that hurt you uh comes back and they're like you know what i was wrong and i i want you back or i was just wrong and that was really messed up and i'm, and I'm sorry and maybe we could make it work and in that moment you're like you know what i hope you are sad you know you deserve it it's but it's much better to be you sad this time than me and i know i sound bitter but And you have helped a lot of famous people speak their truth through song. Um, mm -hmm. What's it like speaking your truth? Uh, a relief and a, and a release because I don't think that, I think that everybody has a, a special way of saying it, right? I don't think that we all experience life in the same way or, you know, have the same way of saying it. So when you allow somebody to just express themselves um, without any limitations, you know, you end up finding out that, oh, this person is saying what everybody was thinking, just a little bit different. Um, and that's my my release from my own music, you know what I mean? Saying, using those different sides of my personality um, to explore topics that are sometimes hard to talk about. And the album's lead single is Dance Alone, inspired by meeting your girlfriend now. What can you tell us about that very personal song? This, it, it was interesting because we met while I was on tour with Lizzo. And in that moment, I just was like, okay, I know that I probably shouldn't be out here, you know, dancing out with somebody new, knowing that I might not be emotionally in the place to uh, really take advantage of it. But why dance alone? You know what I mean? It, yeah, it goes to that moment where I didn't realize what it would turn into. I didn't realize that, you know, it would turn into this person being somebody that I love. I just felt like, oh, this is just something to help me forget, but it evolved into something so much more. You've actually been working in the entertainment industry since you were nine. Um, on yes. stage and on TV with roles in True Jackson VP, Gilmore Girls, and um, the 2007 film Hairspray with the John Travolta and Queen Latifah. What was it like growing up in that world? It was definitely uh, normal for me because I was very used to just working um, as, a, as a child, but it was, it gave me an, uh, the ability to be able to explore all of these different sides of myself. Um, for instance, for Hairspray, it was, I was acting, I was singing, I was dancing. So it really gave me an opportunity to say, oh, okay, I can try out all of these things and see which one sits right with me. Singing was always my number one thing. But in that, in that time, it was like, well, I was really diving into the world of being an actress. And what was that transition like then from being an actress, um, a singer, a dancer, to being a songwriter and a producer? It was interesting because I was able to really use those experiences to, to have to really create my world as a songwriter. When you're going in and you're having, you know, an, an artist, you know, for instance, if I'm not the artist in the room and I'm the songwriter, uh, it's, it's all about listening to that person and saying, okay, what is the way that you would say it? And is this being true to you? And are we having that show through in the songs that we're creating for you? And there's a series on, on Netflix at the moment called Song Exploder. And I'm looking at the songwriting process behind famous songs like R.E.M.'s Losing My Religion and Alicia Keys and Three Hour Drive. Have you had a chance to see it? I haven't yet, but I've heard so much about it. I'm, I'm really excited to check it out. It is so captivating. I wanted to ask you about your songwriting process. How does a song like System come about, for example? I had a crazy, crazy night um, in Stockholm. And I was going out and I, and I realized after, you know, a year, a year later that I was really just trying to get this person out of my system. And I was just going in, I had a really crazy fun time. Um, and, and it was just me really, really acknowledging, oh, I'm being an avoidant and I'm trying to just avoid thinking about this person, you know? And in that moment, it was like, we're gonna go out and party. 
And how do you go about writing personal songs for other people, um, like Thank You Next, where Ariana Grande names all of her ex-boyfriends um, in the song? It became her first number one and um, earned you both a nomination for a Grammy. It's all about listening, listening, having empathy, um, and being able to be, in that case, like just a real friend. So I'm going to tell you the things that I think you need to hear. And I'm also going to listen to what you want to say and what you feel like you need to say. And we're going to make sure that the audience hears that as well. And also having that respect, having the respect to understand that you're about to create something that's very personal for this artist. Um, and they're putting their heart out on the line and you want to make sure that it's that it's taken in the, in the best and most honest way possible. I try so hard to get you out. It's not that you're to blame, but why do you love me this good? You're making me do range without trying, without trying, without trying, baby. You, yeah, you're not, yeah, you're not, I can't undo. Yeah, you And you've been compared yeah, to the puppeteer behind the curtain in The Wizard of Oz. Um, others dub you the secret weapon behind radio's top 40. Um, I haven't mentioned all of them, but you've written songs for Khaled, Panic at the Disco, um, amongst so many other people. Do you think you'll always write songs for others? I will always be writing songs for others because I'll always be listening and appreciating somebody else's perspective um, when they're talking about anything uh, to do with life and, and love and, and things like that. So I can't see myself not writing for other people, whether, you know, I'm performing in stadiums or whether I'm 60 years old, you know, and, and continuously just working on my craft, which I'll be doing even then. So you're going to still be hearing Taylor May songs a long, long time from now. And just before we go, we always end the show with our guest's cultural pick of the moment. What have you chosen for us? I've chose Nurse Ratched. Like, literally, it's between the, the set design, between, of course, Ryan Murphy, Sarah Paulson. Like, they're all incredible. Um, I would watch anything with those names um, on it, but they really, really outdid themselves with the with the style, with the storyline, of course. Taylor Parks, it's been a pleasure to chat to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Your new album, Coping Mechanisms, is out now. We're going to play out with Nurse Ratchet. Thanks for joining us. Yes, thanks for having me, guys. I want to have fun. How about a few? <laughs> you have been subjected to enough pain. I can show you a... Good time. But you deserve someone to show you mercy. You have enjoyed your program with Air France Protect, promising you a pleasant trip with total peace of mind.